Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And either video one of two or two of two today. Um, I'm not sure because I'm pre filming my little intros and I haven't worked out the time zones yet because I'm dealing with like international time zones. Anyway, I have two videos going up today on my YouTube channel for two separate brands for two separate blog hops because that's just how the schedule fell together. So hence the lack of content and then me just posting multiple things at once and it's gonna happen more than once this month. Just it's how the cookie crumbles. So this video is for the Alex Siberia Designs blog hop for their uh, October, 2023 release and yeah they reached out to me and I said yes I have been a fan of their products since they first started was a year ago I'm not sure they're a newer company they're actually based in the UK and then Simon Says Stamp started carrying their products um not long into their new little journey and I've just been kind of lurking and watching and liking what I was seeing and yeah, they've got some like kind of unique looks on things and unique takes on things. And yeah, so I said yes. And I thought, why not? So for this video, I did some faux messy watercolor. It's actually a technique I did years ago. And I can't, I honestly can't remember if I've ever done a video showing it. Um, so basically it involves stamping solid images with water reactive inks onto watercolor paper and then spraying it with water and the inks because they're water reactive move. And the one thing I'm going to mention, that's why I'm bringing it up now in the intro is this is definitely one of those things where you need to experiment with what you've got and see what works because specifically the, the watercolor paper of choice, um, can, can change whether or not it, the inks will actually move. Cause I've just, I've tried it with different types of inks, different types of papers, and sometimes it just wouldn't work for me. And I was like, so that's why I haven't shown it in a really long time. But then I started thinking, and I was like, I probably just didn't have the right combo for me of, you know, inks to paper, whatever. So I will show what I used. I will link to what I used. But again, I highly recommend if you want to try something similar, um, experiment with what you've got. Just take some little, you know, little scrap pieces and press some inks onto it, spray it with water, see what happens. Because yeah, Different papers do different things. Different inks do different things. And it's always fun when you kind of figure out, you know, oh, this works with this or this turns into this or this reacts in this way. So all that to say, keep watching and I'll show you guys how I made these cards. And then again, I will have links down below. I'll have a link to my blog post. That's where the actual blog hop is happening. I just did a video because that's generally what I do for pretty much everything I make. And yeah, I'm going to show you guys how I made these cards. So I'm using the Alex Siberia Designs watercolor flower stamp set. And the watercolor paper that is working for me for this is Strathmore's watercolor paper. And any sort of solid image and specifically florals. Because florals, I find you have more um, leeway with this. But again, you could experiment with all sorts of things. But solid images are the way to go this set has solid images and outlines and i use both with this sort of a set because these are a little more like sort of abstract kind of florals so i liked stamping the images and the outlines because it just kind of will keep things a little more contained which makes more sense when i like spray everything with water and then my inks of choice for today are just Simon Says Stamp positively saturated inks. And I will link in the playlist, um, in the description, um, the specific colors I used. But any of their positively saturated inks are very water reactive. Distress inks will work for this. Uh, distress oxide inks. Like I said, experiment. Try things out. See what happens. Because... You never know. Sometimes it's kind of fun to you might discover something new or a new color combo or just some new cool little reaction. So I used acrylic blocks for all of this because it just gave me the freedom to move everything around. 
Plus, I was able to do multiples faster than it would take me to set, you know, the stamps up in one of my stamp platforms, you know, and if you have multiple stamp, stamp platforms, which I do as well, but that also takes up a lot of space to have multiple platforms going at once. <laughs> so that it, whatever floats your boat, you know, and the nice thing too about this is that nothing needs to be stamped perfectly. Like the outlines for this, the, this set, while it's very... Um, like I said, kind of abstract, sort of loose looking, because the whole point, they're just stamping them. They look sort of watercolored, you know? Um, the outlines line up really easily. But I, at the same time, you don't need to worry about them being perfect. Because again, this is not only, am I going to spray with water? Of course, I'm going to splatter these backgrounds, all the things. And it's just, it's kind of fun. It was kind of fun to just create random backgrounds with all of these images I didn't even and I didn't use all the images from the set the set's a six by eight inch stamp set so it's a big set with a whole lot of images um, they are outlined on the packaging as well like there's little lines you know to to show what goes with what and basically it's still pretty simple because it's basically kind of like a solid image an outline and then a little um, for the florals a little like center that you can stamp in a different color but all the centers I also stamped in black and the black I was using a non water reactive ink because I didn't want that going everywhere so all of the solid colors are water reactive inks the outline is not it is um for this I actually used um Simon's rainbow splash black ink pad because it is a not water reactive ink. People have been asking me about the rainbow splash line. I still haven't had a chance to even get to it. I actually ordered this black ink pad myself because I was, I wasn't sent it and I was just curious. It holds up, doesn't smear with watering or anything like that so far. I haven't tested it out further than that. <laughs> but a uh, VersaFine Claire Onyx Black would work great. Um, any, again, water, non-water reactive black ink will work. So I stamped all my backgrounds. Pretty much followed the same thing. Didn't worry about stamping them great. And then this is where the like the magic comes in. Is I laid out my flower sack cloth and then I sprayed it with water. And you can see the inks immediately start to move. So I also highly recommend if you're doing, you know, larger panels like this or you're just experimenting, having a heat tool at the ready to immediately start drawing. Because depending on how much water you add, you know, all the different factors. Because it's just, it's going to just depend on different things. I've had some times where some inks, they just immediately, they moved so fast and so much that it just looked almost like nothing after I sprayed a bunch of water. And then other times it's like, oh, are these even water reactive? Like nothing's really happening. But those times I think it had more to do with the actual watercolor paper I was using. So it's just one of those techniques where it's, it can be different for everyone, but it's also just fun. And if this isn't your forte, you could just stamp them onto just regular cardstock, you know, and just add some splatter because the, the images themselves, that's kind of the point is they look like watercolor. I just took it even further and was like, let's make it messy. <laughs> so I used my heat tool to just dry things faster because you could see the, the, like, you know, the, the color was starting to like run off the edges, pooling up, that sort of a thing. So the heat tool just helps to dry it faster so I don't lose all of that color. And they do. They look like a hot mess and I'm fine with it. That's exactly what I was going for. I wanted it to just be loose. And um, even though the color ran and moved, th most of it was still sort of concentrated where I stamped it because, you know, it had more time to soak into the watercolor paper while I was doing all these different backgrounds. And then, of course, splatter because there's never a wrong time for splatter. And you guys know I love it. So I started with my splat box. I put the backgrounds in there and I used my Gonzai Tombi gold watercolor with my uh, fan brush splattered that gold all over these backgrounds and then I also went and added black splatter because it just it just is it it did I, I like it <laughs> so for the black I used uh, black soot distress paint put that on one of my little palettes same fan brush splatter that on the backgrounds and with distress paints always immediately wash the brush off I wiped off my palette and especially the black soot because it's so highly pigmented um, it, cause it will stain everything. It will dry permanently in brushes and ruin them. So 
wash them immediately. So that's what I did. I set everything aside to dry. And then um, I die cut scraps of Simon Says Stamps doll pink cardstock with the Alex Siberia You Are Loved wafer die. And I'm adhering a couple layers together with just craft hockey glue. And all of this I did multiples of. I just, I'm only showing like one for the camera because it's just repetitive. So things like this, when I, especially when I'm doing like multiples and doing things that are a little bit repetitive, I've usually got, you know, a show going on, Netflix going or an audiobook, music, something like that, you know, and I just kind of zone out and do just the repetitive things over and over again. So I used the doll pink cardstock to build the dimension and then I topped it with a, um, a die cut of matte gold cardstock. And that just gives it that little extra something with the pink peeking out on the sides versus just stacking on white cardstock, which is what I do most of the time. So I set all those die cuts aside. And then for a little companion sentiment, I'm using the um, self-care sentiments. There's a stamp set with all these different self-care sentiments. And there is a coordinating wafer die set as well that will die cut out all the sentiments. Oh, and there's also coordinating wafer dies for the watercolor flowers. I was going to use them, but ended up going with that messy watercolor, loose background look instead. But you can stamp the florals, stamp the outline, and then die cut them. And then can like build bouquets and all that sort of fun thing. Just thought I would mention that. But the sentiments I stamped onto more scraps of that same dull pink cardstock. I used my anti-static powder tool. I stamped the sentiments with clear embossing ink, heat embossed them with detailed gold embossing powder, and then die cut them with the coordinating wafer die. And then my card bases are top folding A2 white note cards. And I'm stamping another sentiment from that self-care sentiment set onto the insides of these cards with that black ink. And then I took the little the little floral image that I used on the backgrounds and I just stamped that with the purple ink. And for that one, that was violet, positively saturated ink. So I stamped that onto the insides of the cards as well, just to bring in a little bit of that color. And then um, I'm also gonna stamp the little outline for these little florals too, just to tie it all together. And again, it was really easy. Like when I was looking at the stamp set at first, I was like, hmm. You know, because they're they're just they look very loose, very abstract. But once you actually started, once I actually started stamping with them, I was like, oh, these line up unbelievably easily, easy. Because I was also concerned. I was like, oh, I'm like it's gonna be hard to to stamp these and get the outline right, and then you know fit them within the the parameters of the die cuts. And then when I actually did these backgrounds, I was like, oh, everything actually lines up really, really easily. So die cutting them would have been no problem if I just stamped them on regular cardstock. So. Yeah, I overthink things. Welcome to my brain. Anyway, <laughs> after um, I did the insides of the cards, I trimmed down the, the the backgrounds I'd created to A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I pulled out my sewing machine again because I've been telling you guys, I, you know, now that I'm kind of back into sewing on my cards, even though it's pretty much so far, like kind of the same thing. I haven't branched out much at all yet, but I'm just getting back into that groove. And I just sew a perimeter around these panels with just some black thread. I don't use anything special. There's no special thread. There's no special needles, nothing. This is just a basic Janome sewing machine. And yeah, I haven't figured out yet how I will try and film like the actual sewing process. But again, I, I'm not doing anything special. I, I stick the card panel in there, you know, put down the, the foot and, and just go for it. It's yeah, I, I move it around a little bit to get wavy lines and I, I'm now doing it twice instead of just one um, one round of sewing because that also just gives a little bit, bit more interest. Um, this I'm really enjoying. I'm trying to keep a straight line sewing. Whew, not my forte. <laughs> not my forte at all. That's actually more difficult. So being intentionally messy and wavy with it, much more fun and a lot less stressful. So I did that to all of these panels, just sewed that border. And then for these ones, I am going to pull the threads to the back of the panel with all the other cards. I was like leaving the threads to hang out, which I know was driving some people crazy, but I like that. However, those other cards, I think so far all the sewing I've done has been like Halloween cards. I'm just trying to think. I don't know if I've done any non-Halloween cards other than this with um, the addition of the sewing. But anyway, for these, I didn't want the threads. 
hanging off the edge. I just pulled them to the back and then just taped them down with some washi tape. And then as I have also been doing, I use my little Tim Holtz um, thread cutter and distressing little tool here. I've also shown using scissors for this, even fingernails, but this tool just makes it easier. And I rough up the edges of this watercolor paper and I just, I really like the texture it creates. And then my next step eventually, I didn't do it on these cards, but it's like ooh, edging that texture, like either painting some gold watercolor over it or um, I don't know. I've, I've got ideas, you know, just as I'm, I'm dipping my toes into fiddling a little bit more with the whole mixed media thing and just playing around. So I roughed up the edges to all of these after pulling the threads back. And that also helps because then the threads don't just get in my way. And once I was done that, I'm going to adhere these panels to the card bases. And I use Craft Tacky Glue to do that. So back that with some Craft Tacky Glue, get that onto the card base, and then repeat that for all the other cards. And then once the backgrounds are adhered, I'm now going to adhere the die cut sentiments. Again, just added some Craft Tacky Glue to the back of these. The You Are Loved die cut um, ends up cutting it into two pieces. So I just, you could do either or start with the bottom, then add the top piece, add the top piece, then the bottom piece. I like the way that this is kind of laid out and a little bit, um, just kind of freer in a sense. Like it's not on a specific straight line. So I didn't have any difficulty, you know, lining these up at all. I just stuck them down. I was like, no, this works. It's just kind of loose and it's just a fun sort of font. And then I added my little heat embossed sentiment under it. And then as a final little bit of embellishment, because I was going through my stash, I had some Pink Fresh Studio uh, Twilight Ombre glitter drops. And I was like, oh, the colors on these go perfectly with the colors I chose for these backgrounds like it was meant to be. Because <laughs> again, for those not aware, I have like multiple lifetimes worth of bling and it's very rare that I can't find a color that goes with whatever it is I'm making. So I got those adhered into place and that finished off all of these cards. So we've got, yeah, just loose, messy sort of watercolor that wasn't actually watercolor and splatter and some sewing and some gold and bling and fun, just Fun. I really enjoyed making these. So like I said in the intro, this is part of a blog hop. I will have links below the video. I'll have a link to my blog post so you can check that out because I'll have links to everyone else participating. There'll be tons of inspiration, all of that. So you can check that out below if you're interested along with my supply list. I've linked everything I've used so that will be below as well. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos. For thumbs upping and commenting. Um, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.